So thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Pam. And uh, uh, I wonder if you'd tell us all a little bit about yourself and your family and uh, you know, how you first heard about MAF. Yeah, so uh, I'm Mark Draper. Um, I currently live in Luton with my wife, Steph. Wave over there. <laughs> and we've got three daughters, uh, Lexi, Evelyn, and Raya. And um, at the moment, I'm finishing off my aircraft maintenance license. But in January, we're going to be moving to Uganda, uh, where I work as an aircraft maintenance engineer. Um, so I originally found out about MAF um, through my parents and grandparents. They've been long-term supporters of MAF. And growing up as a teenager, I'd often find copies of Flying for Life magazine lying around our house. And um, so I'd pick it up and have a flick through it. And there's quite an aviation-obsessed teenager. I think it was the first realization that, wow, I can use my passion for aviation to serve God in some way. And, um, and then that was kind of further fueled by my, my dad. He uh, gave me a copy of Jungle Pilot, um, the story of Nate Saint and the other missionaries um, that were martyred in Ecuador um, while they were serving with MAF. And at that time, I, I read the book and just felt something so exciting inside of me and was just like, oh, that's what I want to do. I want to be a pilot. I want to fly out to remote communities and, you know, work for MAF. And um, as I just said, I'm, I'm not going to be a pilot. Uh, God had a slightly different plan for me. I'm actually colorblind, so could never go into being a pilot. But... As I kind of moved into aircraft engineering, I, uh, uh, God kind of kept that in my head. And so I've been kind of thinking about MAF for, for quite a while. So. And I hear your granddad had a bit of a key role in inspiring this as well. Yeah, that's right. So my granddad, Le Leslie Draper, um, uh, served in the Second World War with 256 Squadron out in Egypt. Uh, he was a radio engineer on mosquitoes uh, out there. And when the war finished, he uh, moved back to the UK and started work working for British European Airways, which then turned into British Airways eventually. And growing up, he would always tell us this story about Stuart King arriving at his hangar where he worked with a big crate, and it contained the first Cessna 180 that MAF operated. And um, he was part of the uh, British European Airways Christian Union team. And um, they actually helped reassemble the aircraft out of the crate and got it ready to fly off to South Sudan. And in fact, um, in Stuart's book, Hope Has Wings, he's got a, a lovely little uh, part that talks about that. So I thought I'd just read it for you now because um, I think it illustrates uh, quite well that what happened then. So it says... Here was a crate full of tightly packed components, large and small, with no sign of where they were supposed to fit. With no manual, parts book, or labels, the British Airways Christian Union engineering staff came to my assistance when they were off duty and helped greatly in putting together the carefully designed flying machine. When it had been assembled, we pushed the little aircraft out to be fueled. An airport official looked quizzically at the plane, an unusual model for Heathrow. He handed me an invoice for a landing fee. When I objected that the ha aircraft hadn't made its first landing yet, he said, did it come out through a hole in the ground? He wasn't used to planes being put together out of a crate. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so for my family, it's um, just quite exciting to have had that kind of historical connection with MAF. That was the first time I think we'd heard about MAF. And um, now to be able to start serving with MAF, it's, it's a really good kind of close of a circle, I guess. So. Yeah. So I think we might have a picture of Stuart and uh, Phyllis King and then uh, two of their children at the time, uh, Rebecca and John, that were on their, that first flight to Sudan, which obviously was, uh, you know, a bit of a new adventure for them. And you're obviously going to be embarking on a new adventure. So can you tell us a bit more about sort of what led you along that path? Yeah, so as I said, I've grown up always thinking about maybe working for MAF. 
um, but starting a career and having young children and that, it was kind of one of those things that was always in the future. It was always never quite the right time. And uh, Steph and I, when we got married, we'd talk about maybe working for MAF, but it, yeah, it just never seemed like quite the right time for it. And then um, before I worked for MAF, I was working for EasyJet. And um, as you know, uh, when COVID hit, uh, the airlines went through a really rough time. Um, and at EasyJet, I was working as a power plant engineer. So I was managing the fleet's jet engines and auxiliary power units through maintenance and overhaul. And um, I was put on furlough for three months. And so during that time, because my earnings went down, um, my wife, Steph, who's a midwife, went out to work full time. And so I was at home trying to educate our children as, yeah. as we did over, yeah. over COVID, which didn't go very well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not a teacher. But um, yeah, and so I was just spending the time really praying like, God, do you want me to you know, keep working for the airlines for the rest of my life? Or, you know, is there something else you have for me? You know, what, what is it you want me to do with the rest of my life? And um, I stumbled across, actually, a YouTube video um, on MAF's YouTube um, channel, um, which was uh, a video about uh, Joyce Lin, who was a pilot who tragically crashed in Papua uh, a few years ago. And... It was obviously a memorial for her life and how she'd served with MAF. And um, they had these lovely snippets of obviously kind of promotional material that she'd recorded before she passed away, um, where she was talking about how she'd served with MAF and how it was just amazing that God had taken her talents and her passions and, yeah, had been able to um, use that to kind of serve him and work his purpose. And... I, I kind of sat there watching it and thinking, that's what I want to do. I want my life to count for this. That's, that's, that's what I want to do. And so I stood up. I went into our kitchen where my wife was washing up. And I kind of thought, she's not going to go for this. This is going to be, <laughs> you know. And so I think I stood there for a while trying to work out how to broach the subject. And eventually she said, look, you want to talk to me about something? Come on, spit it out. What, what's, what's going on? And so I said, you know how we've talked about working for MAF before in the past? I think now's the right time. And she turned to me and went, yeah, I think you're right. I think now is the right time. So I, I kind of picked myself up off the floor and was like, right, well, we're doing this then. Okay. And so, yeah, in the middle of COVID, we put our application in and here we are. So... <laughs> Here we are. Now, you mentioned going to Uganda in January. Yes. So what happens between now and then? Yeah, so um, since I joined uh, MAF in August of last year, um, although I've been working within aviation for, for many years now, uh, I have never quite finished off my aircraft maintenance license, which is what I needed to be able to come work with MAF. Um, so I, although I'd done all of the exams, um, the way it works for an aircraft maintenance license is you do a load of exams, then you need to collect a logbook, which basically demonstrates that you've worked on every system of the aircraft. And my, my logbook had quite a few gaps in it. And so MAF organized for me to work with a, a business jet maintenance organization called Signature Technicare. They're based at Bournemouth Airport, but luckily for us, they have a line station at Luton Airport. Um, and so I've been working with the team there over the last nine months or so to fill in these gaps and collect enough evidence to be able to apply for my license. And so I did that in April. Um, so at the end of April, I submitted my license application to the C Civil Aviation Authority. And I'm still waiting to hear back. So it's been nearly two months now. So your prayers for that would be greatly appreciated. Um, but yeah, so once I've got my license, we um, have a visit to Uganda booked for August. So we're going on a what they call a look-see visit. We're going to go and meet the team and get to see where we're going to be working, look at where the kids might go to school and that kind of thing. And... Um, and then when we get back from that, we're going to go to All Nations Bible College for their en route course, which is um, a cross-cultural training course. 
um, to help prepare us for service in Uganda. So uh, we'll be there from September to December. Um, and then hopefully in January, everything will come together and we'll be moving out to Uganda. So Brilliant. Uh, so what prayer requests uh, do you have for us as you make that transition and also complete all that preparation? Yeah, so I think, as I said, the, the kind of biggest one is that the CAA would approve my maintenance license. Um, and then I think secondly, it's just for the transition for uh, our kids. We're taking them out of school um, to move to Bible college because it's a residential course. So we've got that move and then the move to um, Kampala. So just uh, prayer around uh, us as a family doing all of that kind of house move and getting kids settled into school, all of that kind of thing. Um, and then lastly, we're, we're obviously in a period of support raising so obviously we can't be out there serving with MAF without um, people like yourselves supporting us both kind of financially and, and in prayer. Uh, it's really important for us that we find a team of people that can be praying for us as we uh, get ready and then go. So um, yeah, that's our kind of three prayer points really. So thank you, Mark, so much for joining us today, and we will certainly be praying for you all as you transition. Great, thank, thank you. you.